Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a new YouTube video on the channel. And today, guys, we're going to be continuing our three game match reviews for the 2023 4 season. And in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the middle three games from round eight. And those games were Gold Coast versus Melbourne, CWS versus the Western Bulldogs, and Fremantle versus Hawthorne. So this game was definitely, so far, I reckon, the game of the round. Gold Coast versus Melbourne at Heritage Bank Stadium. Gold Coast 13 785 Melbourne 13 12 90 Melbourne won by five in the end. This is an absolutely cracking contest. Uh, and there were a couple of real key moments in that last quarter, which, uh, yeah, could have easily swung the game, that free kick given to the Ds directly in front of the goals for that um, for that bit of a fight, which was going on, and then that Van Ruin and Ballard incident as well. So, and those little missed free kicks, perhaps, some could say in those last few moments. So there was lots that made this game go down to the wire. But reviewing the game, though, Melbourne had times where they managed to get a bit of a skipper, a couple of goals of Varney's on Gold Coast, and Gold Coast, just they managed to come back every time and, and make a game of this one. And in the last quarter, with a, with about uh, 30 seconds or a minute to go, McPherson takes the mark, he misses it. And that could have been the the drawing, the tying goal. But in the end, it wasn't quite. And it is a five-point win there for the Demons after this was a cracking contest. 132 fantasy for Anderson. He was the best on ground. 37 disposals, um, four marks, six tackles. Uh, he was great at a centre clearance and clearances in general as well. Max Gorn, 107 fantasy, 105 for Power, 104 for Oliver. And for the game, misser Darcy McPherson still earned himself 102 fantasy with 30 disposals in one of his best outings. Malcolm Rose's four goals really did keep the Suns in it at times. Two goals for Gorn, Troll, King, Casbolt, Pickett, Grundy. One goal, three for Lakota. So we've seen this a lot in our three-game match reviews. He just can't kick very straight. Uh, he's got a great boot on him, but... Sometimes when you're 60 metres out, you do just want to look for that pass to, to find a team out that is closer to goal. It's normally been him, the one that has been missing some shots as well for Gold Coast. Anderson, 37 disposals, 30 for McPherson, 28 for Oliver, 26 for Traka. Marks, 11 for Power. And Ballard, 7 for McPherson, Flanders, Lacocious. Tackles, 7 for Pickett, Sparrow and Viney. Hit out, 35 for Wits, 17 for Gordon, 16 for Grundy, 2 for Troll, Petty, Van Ruin. Team starts now. Where Melbourne went inside 50 way more times, plus 16, 45 or 61. Um, and handled more as well. Uh, clearances were Gold Coast, 42 to 36. 14 to 12 out of the centre. 28 to 24 stoppage clearances. And, and they did beat Melbourne at their own game. This is what Melbourne liked to do. And same with the contested possessions as well. That's where they beat Melbourne. That's where Melbourne liked to be dominant in. But even with those stats, they still couldn't quite win the game. Uh, they took more marks, 94 to 66, 12 to 11 marks inside 50. Uh, this was a really exciting contest, though. The Ds took uh, the Ds laid way more tackles, but yeah, this was such an exciting contest. And in the end, the Demons win by five. All right, now to the first of two Saturday night games at Monaco between the Giants and the Western Bulldogs. And in the end, the Giants 10, 11, 71 got defeated by the Doggies 13, 8, 86. And the Dogs only won by 15 in the end. And the reason why I'm using the word only is because they did build themselves out to a very nice lead in that third quarter. But they survived a giant scare from the Giants who came back nearly to take the lead, which would have been the, the second time, I believe, this year they would have come back from a big margin. Uh, they got, they did the job in round one against Adelaide, but couldn't quite do it this time. Uh, but in the end, Norton does prove to be the game winner in the final term, kicking a couple of crucial goals. Anyway, they will take you through the first part. This was a wet, rainy game as well in Canberra. So it was pouring with rain, hard conditions. The ball was wet, um, but the, the dogs looked to handle the, con the conditions better in the first half, uh, where they take a two-goal lead into the main break. And then the third quarter, that's where the damage is well and truly done. A scoreless term for the, well, a goalless term, should I say, for the Giants. Five behind, so again, missing some chances. Um, but yeah, that's where the Dogs kick, uh, let's see, four goals. And that's where they, yeah, that's where they take the game from a 12-point a lead out to a 33, I believe it was, point lead. And then the Giants, they kick one, two, three, four. The first four goals in a row, um, headlined by the name of Tom Green to try and come back into the game. But a couple of late goals, uh, especially one or a few from Norton, um, yeah, will seal the game shut for the Western Bulldogs. And in the end, they get, a, they get over the line in a cracking game. Tom Green, 170 fantasy, does it all. 170 um, A for fantasy, three goals, one, 38 disposals, six marks, nine tackles, and won a ton of clearances out of the middle. He was amazing. 
151 for English, 130 for Whit, uh, for Whitfield, 129 for Bonsapelli. Goals behind, three goals for Norton, who was important in the last term. Green also for getting the Giants back, three goals as well. Two goals for Hogan, Ward, Lobb and Jones. Disposals, 38 for Green, 34 for Kelly, 32 for Smith and Bonzapelli, 31 for Whitfield. Marks, 12 for Haynes, 10 for um, Whitfield, Iden and English. Tackle was 9 for Green and Bedford. Hit outs, 40 for English, 28 for Flynn. 12 for Lobb, 6 for Himmelberg and Hogan. Go to team stats now where... It was very interesting, and the the Giants went inside 50 more times than the Dogs, 57 to 46, but the Dogs were better when inside 50. Um, yeah, they just made the most of it more. Uh, the, the Giants had way more footy and overhandled it a little bit too much as well, uh, leading to some turnovers. The Dogs won clearances. We know their midfield is great at doing that. That's, that's the part of the game which they absolutely love is that clearance game. We know their midfield with some star-studded names can do that. They took six more marks. Marks inside 50 locked today. Eight, they took uh, six more contested marks, and they led for most of this game. And despite the Giants making a giant surge, it wasn't enough as the Dogs hold on by 15. It was only going to be a matter of time, we thought, before Fremantle were finally going to bounce back to their 2022 best. And this probably wasn't their best uh, as what we saw in 2022 anyway, but they did very well to get a win against a quite a poor opponent at their home ground. Now, this did go in as a danger game, but in the end, Fremantle 18 9, 117, smash Hawthorne 7 6 48. Hawthorne's experienced players, headlined by the names of Frost and Sicily, made multiple amateur mistakes. Um, and in the end, Fremantle waltz comfortably to a 69 point win. And the first quarter was interesting. That was a very even contest, and the Hawks probably unlucky not to have led or been closer in that first term, especially because of all the work they did. Our clearance in the first half especially was quite amazing. That's an area of the game which they've been focusing on recently, and it's fair to say they've still done that part quite well. Um, but, yeah, in the second quarter, that's just where the Dockers got away after the Hawks kicked the first. One, two, three, four, five goals in a row to the Dockers, and their five goals for the term came in a row, and that is what... Got them from a 13-point lead at quarter time right out to pretty much doubling the Hawks' score at half time. They kicked four more goals in the third quarter and then four more in the final to just nail that door shut and get a percentage booster at the end. Andrew Bayshaw back to his best, 157 fantasy, two goals, 34 disposals, nine marks, eight tackles. Um, 117 for Jackson, who was great. Their forwards also looked pretty good on the night. Uh, 103 fantasy for Amir against his former side. 102 for Ryan, Young, and Morrison. Goals behind. Three goals for Amos and Frederick. Two goals for Jackson, Banfield, Brayshaw. And the only multiple goal scorer for the Hawks was Lewis, who is definitely one of their best running around out there at the moment. 34 disposals for Brayshaw, 27 for Ryan, 26 for Young, O'Meara, Day and Nash, Marks, 10 for Hardwick, 9 for Ryan, Clark and Brayshaw, tackles 8 for Erasmus, Brayshaw, Nash, uh, hit out 38 for Darcy, 24 for Meek, 16 for Reeves, 3 for Jackson, Nash is going through a bit of a purple patch at the moment here for the Hawks, he's having a bit of a breakout spell at the moment, uh, the Dockers went inside 50 11 more times than the Hawks, so they were pretty good when they went inside 50. Efficiency inside 50, 63%. That's not bad at all. Um, the Hawks went by Hamble more. The Doggers had way more kicks, though, so you can see the sides doing different things with the ball. Um, clearances, again, the Hawks are great out of the centre clearance. They won that area 10 to 15. Stoppage clearances, though, were won by Fremantle 25 to 19. That was probably the only positive out of this game for the Hawks as well was their centre clearance work. They've done pretty well in that area in the past two weeks. The Dogs, we know they're a good centre clearance side. Beat them last week, beat the Dockers this week with a pretty good midfield line the Dockers have. Uh, the Dockers took way more marks. Marks inside 50 plus 3 plus 6 contested marks. Led for the whole game and um, laid more tackles. And after that, after that blow away second quarter and third, they definitely deserve to win the game from that. Sunday's action of footy is a big one. That is today, Port Adelaide versus Essendon. Probably the most exciting of the three. Collingwood versus Sydney, though, still does have some really big stakes behind it. And then North St Kilda finishes off the round. Uh, we'll go through the first three games where the Blues beat the um, uh, sorry the Lions beat the Blues by 26. Richmond smashed West Coast by 46. Geelong smash well beat Adelaide by 26. And then the three of us going over Melbourne by five. Western Bulldogs by 15. Freo by 69. The latter at the moment as it stands. Here it is. Um, so Collingwood is still with that game in hand, which is very important for them. St Kilda and Port Adelaide still play as well, which is going to have an interesting shuffle on around the top as well. Uh, and then here is the rest of the lot of Essendon and the Sydney still with those games to play. Can be quite crucial for this middle part as well. But anyway, though, there we go. That's going to wrap up this three-game match reviews. 
I hope you guys did enjoy. And yeah, if you're wondering why this video is a little bit shorter, it's because I'm trying to make these three game match reviews a little bit shorter around this 10 minute mark. So yeah, if you're wondering why that is and you've hung, hung around to the end, that is why. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Sending you guys and then miss another video on channel. Thank you guys all so much. Inspire everyone. Flying for the out.